speechfulness, the Buddha said, is the basis of all skillful qualities. Realizing that there's work to be done, and you don't have much time to do it. And the Buddha asked the monks how often they practice mindfulness of death. Some were saying, oh, I thought about death once a day, and he said, heedless. Twice a day, heedless. Worked down to finally, one monk said, each time I breathe in, may I live for the rest of this breath so I can practice. And that's when the Buddha said, no, this monk is heedful. We have very little time. At the moment it seems like we have a lot, but once you've got a body, you're open to all kinds of dangers from within and without. And so you've got to use the body, use your mind while you have it, to develop as many good qualities as you can. People tend to think that having a positive image of the body is good and a negative image is bad, but actually there's healthy positive and unhealthy positive. There's healthy negative and unhealthy negative. And the Buddha wants you to have both a healthy positive and a healthy negative image of the body. Unhealthy negative is when you see other people's bodies as being beautiful and yours is not. You get worked up about that, trying to figure out some way that you can make yourself beautiful, appealing to others, appealing to yourself. And when that thought takes over, you spend an awful lot of time, waste an awful lot of time on the appearance of the body. And what does it do? It gets old. Maybe not as quickly. that you feel an immediate sense of danger around it, but it's quick enough. No one ever ages too slowly. It's always a surprise. This is what the body does as it gets old. The things you used to be able to depend on, it doesn't do for you anymore. And the fact that the body repairs itself when it's young disguises the fact that it's constantly wearing away. It's like the chlorophyll in leaves. Or I surprised in, in the fall when leaves turned yellow and red. I wonder what happened. Well, it's actually the green left them. The red and the yellow were already there. <coughs> and it's the same with the body. <coughs> Use it, and it wears down, wears down, wears down. But when it's young, it can repair itself, and then after a while it stops repairing. and all that energy you put into the body. Where does it go? As oftentimes when the body is attractive, you start doing unskillful things, thinking unskillful thoughts, saying unskillful words. That's why it's unhealthy. To have a positive image that's based on the beauty of the body. What's positive about the body is the fact that you can use it to practice. You can sit here and meditate and develop a sense of fullness and ease, a rapture in the body. That allows the mind to settle in and be able to watch itself clearly. As for the healthy negative image, that's when you look and realize everybody's body is made up of the same stuff. A liver, there's a spleen, their kidneys, there's intestines, and all that crap in the intestines, literally. Stuff on the stomach. People get upset when you say your body's unclean, but well, look at it. If you put any part of the body on a plate, would you want to eat it? Could you use it to decorate your house? Where would you put it in the house? <laughs> you festoon it for Christmas. And the 
purpose of this is not to get you depressed or to develop a sense of disgust. It's more to realize, okay, what's of essence in here? We're fortunate that we can take this body that's made up of all the stuff that goes into it, and you can actually meditate with it. You can do good things with it. And if you're obsessed with the, the looks of the body, that gets in the way. That's why the unhealthy positive image and the unhealthy negative image really are a burden. They really are an obstacle to the practice. So it's good to think about what's of value here in the body, and realizing it's going to give you only a certain amount of time to practice. So while it's strong enough to sit, you sit. When it's strong enough to walk, you walk. Mindfully, with concentration. When they talk about being wakeful, you spend the time when you're not lying down to sleep, walking and sitting, cleansing the mind of unskillful qualities, greed, aversion, delusion, lust, fear, jealousy, all the unskillful things that come up. When you've got the strength, that's the best use of your strength. So the body is good for some things. The Buddha didn't badmouth the body all the time, but he just pointed out, well, what's good about it? What's useful about it? What's it useful for? What's the best use of it? Focus on that. That's your positive, healthy image. Back when John Mun was teaching the monks in Thailand, you have to remember this was mainly sons of peasants, daughters of peasants, people whom the rest of society tended to look down on, and they're used to being looked down on. Now they can't help but have some scars on, on the mind. So he'd remind them, what have you got? You've got the 32 parts of the body. That's all you need to practice. You don't need to have a high education. You don't need to have high status in society. You don't need to have a lot of wealth. You don't have to be smart in the way the world measures smart, but you do have to be intelligent enough to realize that there's suffering and it's a big problem, and here's a path to put an end to suffering. And it's rare that you can find such a path. Make the most of it. All the great achievements were people who had enough wisdom to realize that this was something really valuable. And it was a good use of their bodies. So when you find that you need to fast, do without food, do without sleep in order to practice, don't worry about what it's going to do to your looks or do to your health. In the short run, you can do without these things in the body as long as it's able to put itself back together again. Okay, use it. Because there'll come a time when it won't put itself back together again, and you have to lower the amount of time that you spend. So you've got the opportunity. The body is giving you the opportunity right now. So what are you going to do with it? It's giving you the opportunity for a lot of things. But here's the best use, training the mind, so it doesn't have to come back and be subject to the disadvantages of having a body. Mm -hmm. As the Buddha points out, once you've got a body, it's become a target for sticks and stones and other weapons. You have ears that can hear unpleasant sounds. You can hear pleasant, pleasant sounds, but you're also open to all kinds of other stuff as well. We practice so that the mind can go beyond having to have a body. You need to use the body in the meantime to look after it in a way that's helpful to the practice. And as for looking after it in other ways, making it look good, making it look attractive, there are dangers there you've got to watch out for. Learn to develop both a healthy negative and a healthy positive image of the body. 
and that'll help you along.